Hi guys, Kaiser here, and welcome back to Iron Kaiser Gaming. I hope you've all had a wonderful week out there. I've had a really exciting, eventful one, as I've spent the last week moving to a new place. So as you can imagine, it's been a really busy week for me. I've been away from the channel for a while, tackling some very important things, and getting stuff set up in the new location. And I finally got my computer set up, and I sit down, and I think to myself, you know, it's been a little while, and I just feel like taking a break, sitting down, and recording something fun for you guys. So what do I have in mind? A new gameplay video or maybe a brand new strategy theory crafting video? No, nothing like that. Instead, I feel like sitting down and ranting to you guys for however long it takes about the Latin that is used in Age of Empires 2. You see, uh, you guys know me as an AOE uh, a content creator for AOE 2 and AOE 3, but I am by trade and profession a classical Latin instructor. So I always get really excited whenever Latin gets used in video games like these. But I also start listening carefully, and sometimes I catch mistakes and issues with the way that the actors deliver their Latin lines. And so it's fun to talk about. So what we're going to do in today's video, we're just going to listen to some of the voice lines that are used in AOE 2. And I'm just going to use that as a springboard to talk about Latin. I'm just going to share some of the fun features of Latin, how it's different from English. Uh, and then maybe also provide some critique on what I'm hearing from the actors and how I believe these lines should sound. So if that sounds like fun, buckle in. It'll be a fun video. See, I've got the wiki pulled up, and we're specifically going to listen to the Roman civilization. Now, there's a reason we're just going to focus on the Romans and not the Byzantines or any other Latin lines in the game. And that's because there are two different schools of Latin. If you were to learn Latin, you would learn it either in the classical Latin or the medieval ecclesiastical Latin. Now, classical Latin is the Latin of Julius Caesar and Cicero, the Roman Republic and the Empire, whereas medieval ecclesiastical Latin is the Latin of the Middle Ages and the Crusades and uh, the Latin all the way up into the present day in, in the Vatican and you know parts of Rome and different parts of the world in the modern day. So depending on where you learn Latin, you'll learn to pronounce different letters and different words in different ways. Um, but we're going to focus on the Romans for a couple of reasons. One, because I am a classical Latin instructor. I know classical Latin. That's what I've learned. That's what I teach. And two, to my understanding, and watch somebody jump in the comments and tell me I'm wrong here. I, I might be. But to my understanding, the Roman Empire of the 5th century the Western Roman Empire in its final days, which is what's represented by the Roman civilization here, should be speaking something much closer to classical Latin than to medieval Latin. So that's going to maybe be the foundation of a lot of my complaints when it comes to what I'm hearing out of the Civ, is it's not correct classical Latin. So if I'm wrong about that, then half of what I say won't even work. But to my knowledge, it should be classical Latin, and that's what I'll be speaking from and sharing from as we dive into this video. Let's start off with a couple of the select lines from our villagers here. Let's listen to our four select lines. Salve. Salve. Eus. Eus. Prontus. Prontus. Impera. Impera. Very good. So here are four select lines. If you've played the Roman civilizations, these lines should be very familiar to you. You hear them all the time. They are, for the most part, pretty good. Now, one of the things that I love about Rome, uh, about Latin, classical Latin, is that 99% of the time, there are very, very few special uh, exceptions and unique rules to letters sounding a certain way. 99% of the time, what you see is what you get. What do I mean by that? Well, in English, take the letter C, for example. Sometimes C makes a S sound, like in Cindy. Other times it makes a K sound, like in Kathy. And sometimes it makes a ch sound, you know. Um, but in classical Latin, when you see a letter, right, um, it's just going to make that sound. It will always make the same sound with very few exceptions. So take the uh, take select line number two here. The, the, the way they pronounce it is eus. Now, that's, that's pretty much right on the money. I mean, the H is always going to make a uh sound, a h, right? E makes an uh sound, especially the vowels. Let me talk about the vowels for a second. In classical Latin, Vowels always make an a, e, e, o, u sound. Always. A, e, e, o, u. A is never going to make an a or an a. It's a well, that's a, right? So it's, not, it's never an a sound. E never makes an e sound. Uh, I is not going to be i. <laughs> Basically, right? Those, it never makes those sounds. So it's a, e, e, o, u. A, 
e i o u. So with e u s a, that's pretty good. The the e the the u e u. It's not e u s. Hey e u s. Right? It's e u s. E u s. So that, that's pretty much right on the money. Um, but there is something I'm hearing out of these first three lines. Uh, well, I guess uh, e u s. These two. E u s. Prontus. Prontus. Right. The issue that I'm hearing is they add this extra e eh sound at the end. Eus promptus, and I'm not sure where that final u uh is coming from. I think the actors who are delivering these lines maybe have an Italian background, or maybe it's uh, some element of that ecclesiastical Latin that might be informing how they pronounce the lines. But to my knowledge, in classical Latin, there shouldn't be that a eh sound at the end. It should just be eus promptus, right? So not promptus. Eusa, no. What you see is what you get. Uh, if there was an extra e at the end, eusa promptusa, then it would work. But uh, I don't think that there should be that extra e uh, there. Now, one that I can guarantee you is incorrect, at least from a classical Latin point of view, is our very first line. Salve, salve. Let's listen to that again. Salve, salve. All right. Overall, it sounds good. The a has that a ah sound. The e, the e. So, great. The issue is with the letter V. In classical Latin, V makes a W sound. So uh, think about Julius Caesar's famous line, Veni vidi vici. Caesar himself would have pronounced that, Veni vidi vici. The V always makes a W sound. And so here where they say, Salve, it really should be, Salve, way, way, like a W, like uh, which way to the store, Salve. Whenever I uh, teach my students, Right? I always open up class with, you know, class, discipuli, saluete. And they'll respond back, salue, magister. Right? So it's very important to know that whenever you have that V in classical Latin, it should make a W sound. In ecclesiastical medieval Latin, it makes a V sound. And that might be where this is coming from. Uh, I would imagine in Italian, the V probably makes a V, a V sound. So it's coming over from there. But if these Romans are supposed to be speaking classical Latin, it's not salve, it's salve. Impera. Impera. You know what I'm going to do? Let me bookmark impera. I, I would say this is pretty much perfect. I think they're pronouncing this exactly right. Impera. Impera. We'll come back to impera for a second because there's actually something really cool about this line and about the way that Latin verbs work. But uh, before I get to that, I, I guess we want to talk about verbs. Let me jump down to some of these others here. Um, let's look at like build, farm, forage, mine. Edifico. Edifico. Lignor. Colligo. 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 Fodio. Fodio. Reficio. Reficio. All right. Something that is really, really cool about Latin is that in Latin, as with many other Romance languages, um, there is a lot more information packed into the verbs than we typically get in English. In English, if I say an action like uh, jump or write, well, it's describing the action, you know, write, but it doesn't tell you much else. It doesn't tell you who's doing the writing or uh, when the writing is being done. You might get some hints about how many people are doing the writing, right versus rights, but you know it doesn't really tell you a lot. right? It, it just gives you the action and that's it. But in Latin, as with many other languages, Latin verbs don't just tell you what the action is. They also tell you things like when the action is taking place, who is doing the action, how many people are doing the action, right? And without getting into the weeds, I'll just summarize the basics. Every Latin verb has a stem and an ending. And the ending in particular will tell you not just what the act, well, I guess the stem pretty much tells you what the action is, but the ending will tell you who is doing the action. So here, if we look at um, the act, reficio, uh, fodio, uh, coligo, this O ending, the O ending is telling you uh, that it is the first person singular who is doing the action. So uh, reficio is not just repairing or something like that. It's literally I repair. Uh, you know, uh, coligo is I gather. Uh, 
uh, idifico is I build. So it's really fun. If I wanted to say you build, it wouldn't be idifico. It would be idificas. He builds, idificat. We build, idificamus. Uh, you all build, idificatis. Uh, they build, idificant. Right, so you can put on different endings onto a verb, and therefore, in a single word, you can tell who is doing the action. You can tell when the action is happening. Because I could also do something like uh, "idificabamus," uh, we were building, or uh, "idificabitis," uh, y'all will build. Right, uh, so you can tell when the action is happening, what the action is, and who's doing the action. "Idifico" is I build. So. I just think that's really fun. I love Latin verbs. And whenever I teach Latin, I like to start with the verbs. I think that's kind of the cornerstone of Latin. So that's really cool. Uh, you do have a couple of other uh, unique verbs here, like lignor, uh, piscor. And these are these are different. They're not following the normal uh, rules that I'm aware of. But that, that's kind of a different... Um, I think there's some irregular verbs there, especially uh, ire. Ire means to go. That's an irregular verb because... I go as ello. But that's pretty cool. I mean, that's neat. And the reason why I bring all of that up, I can go back to select four now, impera. Impera is a, it's, it's coming off of the, uh, the imperative, or not the imperative, the um, infinitive verb imperare, which means to order, right, to command. So imperare is to order. Now, if you wanted to say I order, that become impero. Or uh, you order, imperas, he orders, imperat, we order, imperamus, so on and so forth. But if you take that word imperare, which means to order, and you take off the re, and that's it, right? Impera. That is the singular imperative form of the verb. In other words, that's how you give a command to a singular person. So, for example, um, edificare means to build. Right? If I take the ray off and what's left is idifica, that means, hey, you, build. Right? Um, what's funny is that word impera, it's literally a command. It would mean command me. Like I'm, I'm commanding you to command me. Hey, give me an order. Tell me to do something. Now it's phrased in terms of a question, so it becomes uh, command me? Do, do you have a command? You know, it's. it's sort of questioningly inviting uh, the other person, the, the villagers talking to you, the player, and saying, you have my orders? You, you, you want to give me a command? Right? So that's just pretty cool, the, this, this command form of the verb. And again, it, it sounds perfect. Impera. 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 Right on the money. I think that's great. Now let me go back to some of these verbs here, because uh, even though I was kind of hyping up the verbs. There are still some issues with how they pronounce some of these lines, specifically this word edifico. Listen to how they pronounce it. Edifico. 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 This is one of those differences between ecclesiastical and, and classical Latin. In ecclesiastical Latin, A-E makes an A sound. Edifico. Right? But in classical Latin, these are actually this, this, these first two letters, the A-E. It's called a diphthong which is a really funny sounding word. But a diphthong is when you take two vowels, you put them together, and those two vowels together make a new sound. So A-E in Latin, it's not A-E, but they kind of combine and meld to make a new sound. In ecclesiastical Latin, A-E makes an A sound, like they're saying here, edifico. But in classical Latin, A-E makes an I sound. Because remember, in classical Latin, the letter I always makes an E. A, E, E, O, U. The letter I makes an E sound. So A, E makes an I sound. So it should be I difico, not A difico. Right? I difico, I build. So I, I would say they got that wrong. If they're supposed to be speaking classical Latin, it's not A difico. A difico. A difico. It should be I difico. Uh, let me see. Colligo. Colligo. Colligo, I, I think that sounds exactly right. If I'm not mistaken, Colligo. that sounds great. Colligo. Fodio. 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 Fodio, very good. Reficio. Reficio. Now, remember how I said earlier? I'm going to talk about refi refizio for a second, okay? Um, 
Remember how I said earlier that classical Latin, 99% of the time, um, will always make, like the letters, will make the same sound 99% of the time, right? Do you notice how the two actors here pronounce this word differently? Let's listen again. Refizio. 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 The C, uh, so the woman says it, refizio. The C makes a T sound, almost like a T-S. Refizio. And the, the male actor pronounces it reficio. Reficio. Teo, chio. Who's right? Three, two, one. Neither of them are right. They're both wrong. At least from a classical Latin point of view, the letter C always, always, always makes a K sound. So yes, that means that Julius Caesar, if we were to go back into ancient Rome, Julius Caesar would have pronounced his own name, Julius Caesar, right? That's where we get the, the term Iron Kaiser Gaming, right? Kaiser comes from Julius Caesar. That classical Latin pronunciation would have been Kaiser. So they would not have pronounced it Caesar. That, that's a, a pronunciation that, again, comes from uh, later, like later historians going back and saying, okay, his name is Caesar. Uh, that medieval Latin coming in, right? Uh, so here, Reficio, Reficio, both of those are wrong. The C should make a K sound, Reficio, Reficio. Now, one other thing, too, because uh, I, I say like 99% of the time, the letters always make uh, the same sound. One rare exception is the letter I, which makes an E sound. Uh, if the letter I is set before another vowel, the letter I makes a Y sound. I don't think this will really make a significant difference in how you would pronounce this word. Uh, but so you say, Reficio, Reficio. Instead, you're allowed to kind of blur those two so it comes out as reficio, because the I is making a Y sound. Reficio. Reficio. But that letter C should be making a K sound, not a T and not a CH. Both of those are wrong. Reficio. Recte. Recte. Salve. Again, so they have sal salve, salve as a um, kind of a, an acknowledgement. Here's something funny about salve or salve. It comes from, again, the imperative verb salvere. It means to be well. So, um, so it gets used as a greeting. Formally, if you say salve to someone in Latin, everyone knows you're saying hello. Or you're using it as hello, good day, that kind of thing. Literally, what you're saying is a command. Salvere, taking the ray off, leaves you with salve. And it's a command to one person, be well. Salvere means to be well. Salve is a command. Hey, you, be well, right? Um, so again, whenever I start off classes, you know, you know uh, I'll, I'll command the class to get up. I'll say, class, uh, salvete. And I say salvete, I put a T-E on at the end because I'm speaking to a group of people, a plural group. So I'll say, you know, class, salvete, and that means class, be well, is what I'm literally saying. Although, again, what it means functionally is something like hello or, you know, good day. And they respond back, magister, salve. Uh, they're commanding me, teacher, be well. Right? So, good stuff there. Anyway, let's see. Eo. Eo. Confess team faciam. Confess team faciam. Confess team faciam. So again, they're doing the same thing with faziam that they did with refizio earlier. This is something either Italian or it's uh, ecclesiastical Latin, and it's not right. Uh, the first word, confestim, confestim, sounds right to my ear. I, I, I'm maybe hearing a little bit of an E at the end of confestim, like conf, confestime. Do, do you guys hear that too? Let me play it one more time. Confestim faziam. Confestim faciam. I'm hearing a confestim. Confestim, and that would be wrong. Uh, it shouldn't be confestim, just confestim, 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 and then this word faciam, faciam, they're both wrong. It's faciam, faciam, right? The C always makes that K sound in classical Latin. <clears throat> Lignor. Lignor. Now, this is right on the money. Lignor is exactly right. 
And this is one another one of those rare exceptions in classical Latin where the two vowels will make a different sound than you would expect. Um, in makes an N sound, just like you'd expect in English. And the letter G in classical Latin, 99% of the time, makes a G sound like in goat. It will never make a G sound like in genie. So you would never say Lignor or something like that right now. No, no. So you would think it'd be Lignor, Lignor. But one of those rare special rules for classical Latin is when G N get put together like this, it makes a N sound, kind of like a hangnail, hangnail, right? Lignor, Lignor, N. Uh, so that that would be exactly how that should be pronounced, not Lignor, but Lignor, 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 Lignor. Perfectly pronounced. Colligo, piscor, piscor, piscor. colligo. Venor. Venor. Venor, again, uh, pretty much right on the money. Just again, it's not Venor, it's Venor. 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 Yeah, no. Venor. Ah, uh, let's see. And now we took a look at the military lines. Salve. All right, same issue there. Not salve, salve. Tibi servio. I love this line. Tibi servio. Right. Not, not servio, it should be servio. We already know that. I think you guys picked up on that by now. Servio is really fun. That's our that's our action verb. It means I serve, right? So servio with that O ending. O means I here. Servio is I serve. It's the TV that is so much fun and I want to talk about. One of the things that we don't use very often in our English language, in my English language, I should, I should say. I know many of you are from different parts of the world, and maybe you have this in your language. Maybe you have a, a Romance language, and this is coming from, you know, Latin. Uh, in English, we don't have this very often, and that's the use of noun cases. Uh, for most of us English speakers, we hear a noun case, and we go, what is that? I have no idea what a noun case is, right? Uh, when we learn a noun, like, for example, a table or a car, right? A, a plane, a game, a bike, whatever, you know? Just a thing. When we learn a noun, we just learn the noun. That's that's it. Um, and it doesn't matter where I'm using that noun in the sentence. The noun is just the noun. I would say something like, the table is strong, or I built the table, or whatever. I might put on an apostrophe S to show ownership, like the table's leg is blue. But, you know, I mean, for the most part, it's just table is table. The only time in English that we use a noun case. I'm about to explain what that is. The only time in English we use a noun case is with our pronouns. Take a look at the, the word I, for example. Now, if I is the subject of a sentence, we would say I, like I walk to school. But if that word I becomes a direct object, it's no longer I. That noun changes. I wouldn't say my mom loves I. I say my mom loves me, right? I becomes me. In Latin, every noun works that way. Um, it's going to change its shape, specifically its ending, based on the job that it's doing in the sentence. So, for example, uh, here, the word you, right? Uh, if someone were, you know, I have students come up to me and say, Mr., uh, you know, teacher, um, how do I say you in Latin and I have to tell them well it depends on where you're using you in the sentence right in this sir I serve you right uh, if, if you were the subject like you are walking to school it'd be to to you to but here because uh, it is the direct object I guess it's actually kind of in the indirect object it's a in the dative case that, that's a whole other thing I don't want to get into the weeds but basically because you are not the one serving, you're not the subject of the sentence, you're the one being served, instead of to, it's tibi. Tibi servio. Right? Um, it, it, it's funny, in fact, uh, the word for I in Latin is ego. So like I walk to school could be ego ambulo ad ludum, right? Or ego ad ludum ambulo. But the word for me in Latin, I is a direct object, in Latin is me. It's M-E. It's the same word. Pronounced a little differently, but same word. Let's see. Impera. 
This is very good. Impera. The only issue I'd have here is to me this sounds a little bit more like a, like a statement. Command me. Impera. I, they, they put a question mark in the script. I don't know if that's really a question. Impera. I, I, that's how I would say it. Like, do, you, do you have orders for me? Impera? Impera is literally like, hey, boss, command me. Right? It's more of a statement uh, of command. Recte. Recte is exactly right. That's very good. Eo. Eo. Pario. Pario. Yeah, very good. Punemus. Punemus. This is really good. But there's one issue. Can you guys hear it from what I've said so far? Punemus. Punemus is not right. That A sound is not correct. It should be punyamus. Punyamus. A E I O U. Punyamus. And I, I see the macron over the A. And so you might think, like from English grammar, you say, oh, that, that line over the A means it's an A sound, but that's not how this works in Latin. Uh, the macron in classical Latin name would simply be that the you're holding that sound a little bit longer. So instead of punyamus, it becomes pugnamus, pugnamus. You just you you're you're sort of emphasizing that particular letter, but it's still gonna make an ah sound, not an a sound. So not pugnamus, uh, it should be pugnamus. Ad pugnam. Ad pugnam. That's another. This is a, a great example of uh, the case at work. So the word for fight in Latin is pugna, right? Pugna. Um, so if, if fight were the subject of a sentence, like, uh, the fight was hard fought or something like that, right? Um, then it would be pugna. But you see that word ad right there? That is an accusative case preposition. Now a preposition, in case you don't remember your English grammar, is, um, a, kind of a word that links a particular noun to the rest of the sentence, right? It's a word that tends to show location, right? It's under the desk, above the shelf, across the street, next to the light post or whatever, right? In this case, the preposition is to, and every preposition has an object of the preposition. Under what, above what, beside what, next to what, to what, right? So in this case, the preposition ad has the object of the preposition battle. And this is an accusative case preposition, which means that the word punya needs to be in the accusative case. And so instead of saying ad punya, it would be ad punyam. The A becomes an AM to, be, to go into the accusative case to show that it is a preposition. So uh, it's just one of those beautiful nuances of Latin. And if you've never you know, if, if you're like me, you know, you, you were born in America or in an English-speaking country, and you've just never learned another language, um, a lot of this can sound strange, you know, and the first time you're hearing something, like, wow, i got to learn all these different versions of a word, but as you learn different noun families, because every noun, every verb, they belong to different families, right, and they have the same general rules, and as you get used to those rules, there's a beauty to how it works. It's, it's almost poetic, and so it's just really cool. Uh, to see Latin in action. Ad punyam means to battle. Ad arma. Let me see here. Uh, let's play that. Ad arma! Ad arma is exactly right. Yeah, and the same thing. Two arms, right? Um, if I'm remembering correctly... Uh, yeah, I might be wrong about this, but uh, arms, I believe, is uh, like like a like a weapon. An arm would be armum. I might be wrong about that. It's armum, and then the plural of um is a. Ah, so ad ad arma, two arms, two weapons. Right. Very good. Salve. Salve again. He says salve, not salve. Now he is the monk, and. Considering it's literally called ecclesiastical Latin, right? Um, I'd, I'd almost have a little bit more grace, if you will. Um, church pun. Uh -huh. I'd have a little bit more of grace for the, the monks speaking instead of an ecclesiastical Latin in that particular context. Because, yeah, it's like the, the Roman church eventually developed that uh, ecclesiastical style of Latin. So, uh, But if I'm following the classical Latin rules. Impera. 
TB Servio. Yeah, you see, you gotta really make sure he hits that V. TB Servio. And it just highlights. No, it should be Servio. It's Servio. In nomine Dei. Yeah, so this is really fun. In nomine Dei. Right? Uh, let's see. In nomine Dei. Uh, to my understanding, in, in classical Latin, it'd be Dei. Uh, no, no, we're not. EI e is a diphthong. It, it would be Dei. In nomine Dei. And that is... That's really cool. Day here does not mean God. It means of God. In the name of God. And you'll see here, actually, this is a fun part about Latin. You see how it's translated as in the name of the God. In classical Latin, there is no article word for a or the. If I take a word like lupus, wolf, or deus, God, Lupus Deus. Those words mean lupus. It means wolf, a wolf, or the wolf. All three of those, one word, lupus. And for us as an English translator, we would just have to pick which one makes the most sense when we're translating it back into English. All right, so the same thing is true here with Dei. Dei would be in the name of God, in the name of a God, or in the name of the God. Now, I would say, given the context, I think in the name of God makes the most sense here. But, you know, that's a the God. It's technically not wrong. Right? What's also fun is uh, they is, so there are five Latin noun cases, right? And I don't want to get into to the weeds of all of them. But this one here, they uh, is in the dative case. And the dative case is literally how you would say... Um, no, 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 I'm so sorry. A dei is in the genitive case. So that's showing ownership. Dei is whose, whose name, right? So uh, you could say lupi is the wolf's or of the wolf. Dei is God's or of God's, singular, right? It would be uh, deorum if it were of the many gods when age of mythology comes out you might see deorum you know a bunch of a bunch of pantheist or a polytheist gods running around but dei would be a singular in the name of the one god the one true living god Eio. Eio. Yep. recte recte correct salve salve confest in faciam he does that better that's fascinating he nails that notice let me let me rewind. Up here with the villager, they were like confestima faciam. Just this, uh, I think again, kind of a cliched Italian coming in. Confestima faciam, right? Confestima faciam. Uh, fa faciam, faciam, faciam. Confestima faciam. Confestima faciam. Uh, I don't know. It sounds to me, to my ear, like it's confestima. I kind of hear this e coming out at the end, but the monk nails it. Confestim faciam. Now, it, it should still be faciam. That's a, a k sound, not a ch uh, in classical Latin. Confestim faciam. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. He does that right. It's, it's faciam. He nails it. That is exactly correct. Confestim faciam. Now, he, for some reason, he holds that a faciam uh, a little bit more than I would have. But yeah, confestim faciam. Very well done. That, that's exactly right. Confestim faciam. That's cool. All right, one more, and I think we're going to call it on this random video. Ecke. Ecke. It's funny. Ecke. Um, I have learned that in the textbooks that I've read and, and teach out of, ecke means look, right? Look over, like, look, look at that thing. Look, that boy is playing out on the street, right? He's watch out. Ecke, look. Uh, but here, ecke actually translates to I'm here, right? I wonder if it's maybe even being used as kind of a look at me sort of thing, right? Look, here, I'm here, right? Ecke. I would say that I don't, I've never used ecke to mean here, like it is here, right? Uh, est ecke or something, I don't, I don't think that would work, but. Quid vis. Quid vis, all right. So you probably know what's wrong here. Can you guys hear it? Quid vis. Yeah, it should be quid vis, vis. The, the V makes a W sound, not a V sound. So not quid vis, it's quid vis. 
Ooh, this one should be Cur me interpellas. Interpellas. Cur me interpellas. Yeah, interpellas. That's good. I like it. Adsis. 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 Yeah, that's good. That's good. Faciam cor rogas. 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 The, the emphasis should be on the A. Faciam quod rogas. Perfect. Faciam quod rogas. Yeah, faciam. Not faciam, not faciam. Faciam. Me gratia. Me gratia. Me gratia. The only thing I'm wondering, gratia. He says gratia. Uh, he emphasizes that, that I sound, gratia. When, again, the I is placed before the A, I'm wondering if we should have a Y sound. Gratia. Gratia. Like the, the I and the A blending together. Gratia. Me gratia. Mm. And it means, they translate it as by my grace. Huh. I'd have to double check if that's even translated correctly. I'm not going to try to do that on camera, but I might go back and double check on that one because gratia does mean grace and then me is me. I don't know if that would be by my grace. I think I'd have to double check the, the translation on that. That might be right. I, I'm not going to try to say otherwise, but I have my eyeball on that. Ut rogasti. Ut rogasti. Ut rogasti. Ut rogasti. Only thing it sounds like he's putting that emphasis on the O. Ut rogasti. When I think it, the the macrons are over the A and the I, it's be ut rogasti. Ut rogasti. Fakiam. Fakiam. I will do is exactly right. All right, and I think that covers it. Again, I'm not going to talk about the Byzantine or or any of the other. There are several uh, of the other sieves they have monks that speak Latin, and those are definitely pulling from an ecclesiastical medieval Latin, but. Um, here with the classical Roman, I believe they, or with the Roman Empire, the Western Romans, I think they would use a classical Latin. So um, that was just sort of a, there's just so much Latin to talk about. That's just a lot of fun. Um, and I hope you guys have maybe just learned something cool about Latin. If you've never learned the language, it's a great place. If you, if you only know one language, if you only know English, right? Latin is an awesome language to learn. And I know some people say, well, you know, why would you ever want to learn a dead language? You know, it's, nobody speaks it anymore. But no, no, you want to start off learning a language that is not going anywhere. Right? The rules aren't changing. It's set in stone and it, and it provides the foundation for Western civilization. Um, uh, you know, they're part of that foundation anyway. Um, and so much of it, it just gets used in so many ways and makes you such a better communicator. Um, it's a wonderful language to learn. And hopefully I've given you maybe some, I don't know, if nothing else, some entertainment going over the way that these guys pronounce their lines and how they may or may not get it right uh, in their classical Latin. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Maybe you learned some fun things about Latin. I've got to stop myself from just going on about nouns and their rules and verbs and their rules. It's, it's a lot of fun. Latin is a lot of fun. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this. That's all for tonight. Uh, if you liked the video, I don't know how many of you are even going to watch all the way to the end because this is a very weird video. This is not your typical Age of Empires content by any means. But if you liked it, let me know in the comments below. Like the video and consider subscribing to the channel. Let me know, guys, if you want to see more of this kind of random stuff. For now, this is the Iron Kaiser signing off. Have a great one out there.